Okay, so in our last video, we set up a uh, landscape server. And we stopped when we got to this, well, this page here, which shows us how to set up a landscape um, client. So let's go ahead and walk through this process. And I'm just going to follow right through these processes here. Uh, so I am going to issue the command. Let me blow this up to make it a little bit easier to read here. So it's apt update, which goes through and verifies that all of our uh, packages are up to date. Make it updates all of our uh, repository information. And then I'm going to do an apt install landscape client. And yes. Now all I'm doing is I'm following along with these commands right here. The next one is going to be the landscape config. So I'm going to have to skip back out of the zoom level so we can see when we're done here. All right, so let me clear, and then I'll go back into my higher zoom level, make it a little easier to read as we put in this next command, which is landscape-config-dash. We're going to do computer title. And I'm just going to call this really creatively server one dash dash account name standalone uh, dash dash URL is HTTPS slash forward slash. And now remember, normally this would be a uh, entire um, fully qualified domain name. And you would need to be able to resolve that name probably through DNS. Since I'm doing this locally, and I'm not even sure if I can add this system as a client to itself, we're going to find out. Let's have fun while we're at it, right? Um, what's the point of doing this if you can't have fun? Um, the ping URL is going to be the same thing, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash classroom. Since I'm looping back to itself, it should be able to resolve that perfectly. Now, all I did here is I entered this command exactly as it is here, except I changed that name. Now, the account name standalone, if we come back to our, not our account name, back to our landscape here, you'll see account name standalone, just fine. Um, you'll also notice that the commands here went ahead and put in the name of the server that I'm on. So let's see if this will work. Get to the right one. Account registration key. I'm just going to hit enter. So the landscape communicates over HTTP. We don't have an HTTP or PS proxy. Do we want to enable script execution? Yes. So, and this is one thing that's really cool. Um, let me zoom out here. You'll see this landscape has a feature which enables administrators to run arbitrary scripts on machines under their control. Uh, by default, it's disabled, which is fine. But if you enable it, then users can run scripts against this machine. So yeah, I want to go ahead and allow that. Um, landscapes are, by default, scripts are restricted to the landscape and nobody users. Um, that's fine. We'll go ahead and go with that. You may also provide an access group for this computer. We don't, well, let's do just servers as our access group. And then any other tags. I don't need any other tags. All right, so this is going to set up the landscape client. Yes, we want to request a registration for this. Now, um, up here, it said we needed an account registration key. Let me come back over here to landscape and you'll see the registration key says no registration key is required. Now, if you decide to get a registration key, what happens is you have to set up a canonical one account. And when you go to do that, you can do that and you'll come, you'll walk through everything, you get to this page right here where it's going to ask for payment details. Now remember, landscape will run for 10 users. Um, on an on-premises uh, system will run for 10 users without needing to pay. And that's why over here, here, it says no registration key is required. 
because we're limiting it to that. If you want more, you go through this process, you come here, you put in all of your payment information and then add payment details. And then you can run it for more than 10 servers or, um, or if you're doing a hosted system, you'll get $100 free usage and then beyond that, it'll start charging this account. But since we're keeping it under 10, we should be fine. Now you'll notice we have a computer needing authorization. There's one computer waiting for authorization and it's server one. Awesome. Let's click on server one. Here's the title, host name, the computer, uh, client access group, tags. We're going to go ahead and accept this. And this server has now been accepted into our organization. So we have one computer available right here one computer and it will start giving us information about that system and now we can start managing um, though that system from this interface so this is a generic information edit the computer information ping it when it was registered some information about it the tags any annotations any comments we want to save Restart or shut down the selected computers either as soon as possible or at specific days and times. We can play with um, licenses here, um, configure access groups. We also have, so that's our info under our activities. We have no activities currently defined. We can review the system hardware, and that's really going to not give us much because I'm running this thing inside Hyper-V. I can look at monitoring for this system. So custom graphs, here's the load average, memory average, um, used swap percentage, temperature, disk information, network if that's supported, download CSV files, scripts that I can execute. So I can uh, title the script, create the code for the script, and then execute the script, run a specific user. So it allows me to deliver a script remotely to that, which could be very powerful. View processes, no active process information found. Let's look at our packages. No known security issues, package information for server one. Uh, look at users. No users currently found on server one and look at reports. So this gives me, and it's not complete, but it gives me a way of monitoring. See if I can get the two words separate. Monitoring and managing my systems uh, remotely from a web interface. And it's not complete, right? So it's not going to give me everything. It's not going to be like I'm SSH into the device. But it does give me, hey, now we've pulled some information. Now I have all of my users that are showing up. It just took a little bit to get there. I found it. Uh, let me go back to my packages. Last update. All right, here's server one. Here's my available and installed packages. How many upgrades are available? Processes. Bingo. Now we're getting some information. It just took it a little bit. And... We now have some valid information that we can begin working with. So bingo, this is now populated. Awesome. And this then can become a very nice management tool. So remember, we can only do up to 10 servers if we're doing an on-premises environment without having to go to, um, without having to start paying for it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. And our configuration, fairly straightforward. If you ever forget, we just go back to our organization and add a new registration following these instructions, and it will walk you step by step through it. So there is a quick overview of using Landscape to manage and monitor your Ubuntu servers.